Today, we're painting a vampire. Hi guys, Jonathan from Two Raven Studios. Welcome! I do painting videos, model reviews, and general gaming content. If that's something that interests you, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. Today's going to be a follow-up to last week when we painted a bunch of skeletons schemed after the Cursed City artwork. We used something really quick and easy to get them done really fast. Today what we're going to do is pump it up to the next level a little bit and spend a little bit more time on a miniature using those same techniques that we did last time. So I'm not going to go over in detail why I'm painting the way I'm painting, that whole cool versus warm contrast that I have going on. You can check out the video, I'll leave the link up here, whatever side it's on, so you can check that out. But what we're going to do today is paint Radikar the wolf, the big bad of Cursed City. And we're going to spend a little bit more time on him because he is the big bad of this game. And apply the things we did last time just with a little bit more detail. So let's hop right in the painting and check it out. We have the mini primed with Viejo Gray Surface Primer. And now we're going in with a mix of Black Templar and some Talisar Blue contrast paint in the airbrush. And we're shading everything down. We're pretty much going to hit all the different parts of the mini. Since we're using contrast paint, we actually can control how dark it is because we can put several layers to darken things up. So we want to make the pelt kind of like a medium gray while the kind of the things that are going to be metal are going to be even darker than that and the boots as well so you can kind of see on the sword we're leaving certain spots because we're already creating the feel of metal with some highlights in areas and shadows in other areas you can kind of see i left that bright spot in the middle of the sword and you just want to move around take your time this is setting the stage for all the shadows and highlights So now we're adding some white to the previous mix and adding some mid-tones in. I'm focusing mainly on the pelt here. The gray primer is actually almost white. It's very, very bright. So this is just darkening down that anything that's still that gray primer on the pelt to add us like a nice mid-tone of the gray for the fur of that wolf pelt. And now we have a mix of titanium white ink with a little bit of raw sienna mixed in and we're going mainly over the skin here to brighten that part up but then we want to add some highlights here and there in other spots we also want to highlight anything that we're going to be painting red in the next step so the pants and the cape just add some highlights into those so when we do the next step there's already kind of an underlay of some nice highlights and shadows kind of see right here on the leg we want to add some highlights there Now we're going to use Blood Angel's red contrast paint on the pants and the cape. Just anything we want to be red as the camera focuses in on my airbrush. You can kind of see what I'm doing. We're just going over the areas. They've already been pre-shaded a little bit, so we should have some shadows and highlights just by putting a thin layer of this over top. And the camera really wants to focus in on my airbrush right now. But there you can see kind of what we're doing, just adding red in. And we just want to add a little bit more shading to that red. So we're mixing a little bit of Black Templar in with the previous mix. And just adding a little bit more shadows in than we had before. This is a step we did not do on the last one. We're just adding more shadows before we do our, anything else. After this, we're going to move over to our standard brush. So now with Black Templar Contrast Paint, I'm going to paint in anything that's kind of like the little metal bits. So we just want to darken those down. So the belt buckle, the knife parts on the belt, all the little detail of the little symbols and everything on the belt and on the one cuff. We just want to darken those down a little bit with Black Templar. Just take your time with this. I have some water on my palette too, so I can mix in and give myself you know, different little shades. If I want something a little bit not quite as dark, I can mix the water in. But we just really want to separate all the different parts out here because everything, since we're doing this black and white scheme, everything is gray, so we want some things darker. The things that we really want dark at this point are going to be, like I said, the metal bits. Now, with a mix of 
white from Pro Acryl and again that Black Templar contrast paint. We're just highlighting the pelt a little bit. Again, we're trying to create different areas of different shades here because since everything's gray, we want to have differentiation between all these different parts. This is going to get shaded down in the next few steps, but we just want to make sure we have set where our highlights and shadows are before we start doing the next steps with the oils. Just take your time, move around the pelt, and highlight all the fur. This is kind of tedious because that pelt is a lot of the miniature. Now with that same mix, I'm actually highlighting all those parts I painted with the Black Templar Contrast in the last step that are in the metal. And we want to do little tiny highlights here and there, just kind of glints of light on that darkness that we added in the last step. This is really trying to help show the difference of these textures that we have. This is metal that's reflective as opposed to the fur where our highlights are kind of broader and softer. Now we're going to move in with the oil paints. We have a mix of ivory black and a little bit of Windsor blue. And if you see in my palette there, I actually have different consistencies of the oil paints with different versions amounts of mineral spirits mixed in for different areas and I'm using a small brush and just taking my time and putting the shadows where I want them. So certain things I'm going to use a thicker mix to make a little bit darker, certain parts I'm going to use a thinner mix so it's a little bit lighter. But if we have the right consistency this should just run into all those cracks and crevices and give us some nice shading. And then after letting it dry for a little bit, we're just going to go in with a makeup sponge and in a downward wiping motion, just add some highlights back in and clean off some of the oil paint off the highest surfaces. I actually probably waited a little bit too long here for it to dry, but it's okay. We can fix anything with a little bit of mineral spirits or with the acrylic paint in the next step. So now we're going to start in with the red parts. I'm using Bold Pyro Red from Pro Acryl. You can use any bright red you want here. And sorry if the camera's a little bit out of focus, but you can see what I'm doing is I'm drawing small little lines and adding highlights on tops of the pant right now. We just want to create, like I was saying in the last video, we want to create kind of a painted look. So we want to sheathe the brush strokes. So we're actually drawing little lines here and there to kind of give us that feel of a painting on the miniature. You can kind of use thin paint and do several coats here to brighten up the area. And we want to do the same thing on the cloak on the back, just highlight those raised parts. We don't want smooth blending because it's going to ruin the effect we're going for. We just want to create a nice look of painted highlights. Now we're going to further those highlights by mixing a little bit of pale pink in with the red color. And again, draw little lines on the inside of what we did in the last step. So the last step, we created the broad stroke highlights. Now we're creating finer highlights inside of those previous highlights. I forgot to mention earlier, but you can kind of see I did the face a little bit with the red too, kind of like he just was feeding. And he doesn't look like he'd be a clean eater. He's a bit of a messy eater. I mean, he is called the wolf. And we're just going to add a little bit more to those highlights with pure pale pink. Just nice small little highlights along the sharp edges of the cloak and the pant. Adding a little bit more into it. And again, we're using little tiny lines to simulate a painted look. It's also going to help make the cloak look a little bit kind of worn and ratty. This step you can really have fun with. We want the red to be kind of the bold thing that stands out on the mini. Now we're going to go in with a mix of black Templar and white paint. And we're going to do highlights here and there. We're going to start on the black parts. So when we're highlighting these black parts, we want to keep real small, fine lines to keep it nice and black with just a little bit of detail to show 
where the folds are and the edges of these parts. So you can see on the boot here, just nice little fine lines along the edges. That's all we want to do. Keep most of it black. Since all of this is gray, we want to make sure we distinguish between these different parts and the size of the highlights is one thing that's going to help us do that. So we're going to do the same thing with these fine little highlights on the metal parts that we painted earlier. So we already pre-highlighted them before we did the oils. We're just kind of repeating that step and bringing them back to a little brightness. The oils would have toned them down, so now we'll have two steps of highlight if we do this. Again, don't overdo these highlights. It's important that we keep these steps a little bit different, so we want different stages you can kind of see how the different parts look different now because we have different levels of highlights on them. Using pretty much that same mix now, we're going to go back over the pelt. But now we're going to use broader highlights so these parts look a little bit grayer and lighter. And again, we're going to distinguish between these different parts. And the way we're going to highlight is different. So instead of those sharp lines, we're going to kind of create broad strokes and something similar to what we did on the red, we can add little lines across to kind of create some texture. So even these parts that don't have the fur on them, like the paw, we can create a little bit of fur texture on them. With everything being the same color, we want to create different textures here to create more contrast. So we have the warm, cool contrast going, and we want a little bit of texture contrast going as well. And now with some Black Templar, I'm just going to paint in the teeth and the claws here. On the next step, I was actually going to highlight these with the color I used on the skin, but I forgot to do that. So if you're painting, don't forget to do that. We're going to highlight this in the next step, but right now we're just darkening down those claws with a little bit of Black Templar. And for a final step here, we are mixing some Bold White with Raw Sienna ink and just highlighting the skin now. So the little bit of the raw sienna is going to add some warmth in it without changing the color too much, and it's also going to help differentiate the skin of the vampire himself from that big fur cloak. So that's an important thing we want to do here, is make sure we separate out the parts that are flesh from the parts that are the fur. Because the fur is a lot of this miniature, we really need to make things stand out. So you can see I'm really focusing in on the chest here to make sure that stands out. You can mix in a little bit of Black Templar if you want some mid-tones as you're shading here. Something you really need to focus on is that hand that's a little bit awkward pose, but since it's in the middle of the fur, we want it to stand out as skin. And once you do this, you have a finished miniature. So here we have the finished miniature. As it's rotating, you can kind of see the different areas. We've highlighted to different levels, and we've highlighted them in different ways. So even though we have a very limited palette here, the different areas can stand out on their own. This is very similar to what we did in the last video, but you can see we just added a few extra steps here and there to pump up the detail for the heroic character, or I guess villainous character in this case. I'm really having a lot of fun with these Cursed City miniatures. I hope you guys found that useful. If you did, please leave a like. I've been having a lot of fun painting this really stylized scheme. I can't wait till the full Soul Blake Gravelord's battle tone comes out so I can get my hand on the Blood Knights and some of the other cool stuff and paint those up using this same scheme. But in the meantime, I've been having a lot of fun on these Cursed City miniatures. If you guys been playing Curse City, let me know in the comments below. Hopefully I'm going to get my first game in this weekend. I have pretty much all the baddies painted. I'm going to move on to the heroes. Maybe there'll be a future video about how I paint them up. I have some cool ideas for that. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. But until then, keep on gaming and paint your minis.